Hello, my name is Mark Don, and I'm one of the elders here at Wilmot Center Church. I'm introducing myself to you today because names are important. Names matter. But honestly, I'm terrible with names. Remembering them does not come easily for me, and I'm always blown away by those people that seem to be able to memorize and recall tons of names seemingly with no effort. That does not happen for me. Yet I know that names are important. Names give identity. Names distinguish us from one another. In some cultures, names are even used to describe the character or the destiny of the person. Names are a big part of who we are. In fact, it's probably not that hard to believe that you really don't know someone unless you know their name. And that's why this video devotional series is so important. We're learning about the names of Jesus because as we get to know his names, we find out more and more about what he's like. And the better we know him and what he's like, the more likely we are to trust him. And that's when our relationship with him will grow. Today I want to introduce you to a name for Jesus that's only used one time in the Bible. But it's one I bet that you've heard. It's found in an Old Testament book called Isaiah 9 verse 6, which is pretty cool because it was written almost 700 years before Jesus was even born. Now in that Old Testament book, the prophet Isaiah is talking to the people of Judah about their upcoming captivity in Babylon. It's not a cheery message, but in amongst the warnings are some amazing verses about a coming Messiah, verses that Jesus would eventually fulfill with his coming. And here's the verse I want to focus on in chapter 9, verse 6. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. There are some great names for Jesus in that passage, but the one I want to focus on today is the last one, the Prince of Peace. Was I right? You've heard that one before, right? Most likely, you heard it during the Christmas story as we celebrate Jesus' birth. But have you ever really thought about it? The Prince of Peace. The Prince of Peace. Now remember that names have meaning. Names help us to know more about the person we're in relationship with. So why this name? Why is Jesus the Prince of Peace? Let's start with the word Prince. Think about the princes you might know. Prince Charles, Prince Philip, maybe even Prince Charming. All those princes acted under the authority of a king or queen. And when they make appearances at events, they represent that sovereign monarch. Now, John 1, verse 1 says that Jesus and the Father are one. But when Jesus came to earth, he came to speak for the Father, to be his representative on earth. Now, to be a prince here implies that he has authority, that his word carries weight and significance. And this is good news because it means that whatever he says and whatever he does, he can back it up because of who stands behind him and with him. Okay, that explains the prince part. But what about the peace? What kind of peace does the Prince of Peace bring? When this prophecy was first spoken, I'm sure those who heard it were hoping for a time of peace between nations, a peace enforced by a strong king who would hold evil in check with his power and his might. But that's not the way Jesus came, and that wasn't really the kind of peace the passage was talking about. So what was it then? What does Jesus, the Prince of Peace, give to us? The first kind of peace Jesus brings is peace with God. Romans 5 verse 1 says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. This is really important. We know that God is holy, that there is no sin in him at all. And if you're like me, you know that we do not fit that same description. There are lots of things we do and we say and we think that are far less than holy. And honestly, that applies to everyone who ever lived everyone except for Jesus. And that gap between God's holiness and our unholiness, it leaves us at odds with the Father. And that's where Jesus, the Prince of Peace, comes in. We just celebrated Easter a few days ago. Jesus' sacrifice on Good Friday and his resurrection on Easter Sunday, that was for us and for the very purpose of creating peace between God and man forever. We have peace with God because Jesus took our guilt and all the things that kept us from the Father when he died on the cross. Jesus gives us peace with God. 
I think the second kind of peace that Jesus brings is especially fitting for the current situation in our world these days. Listen to some of these passages from the New Testament. Philippians 4 verse 7 says, And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. John chapter 16 verse 33 says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. John 14, 27 says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Do you catch all of that? Jesus is associated with peace and Jesus promises his peace. But this time it's not peace with God he's talking about. This time it's peace in our circumstances. Now let's be clear that Jesus never said that peace is the absence of trouble. He knows where we live. He knows what life in a fallen world is like and that we will go through hard times. But Jesus, the Prince of Peace, reminds us that if we trust him, if we call out to him, if we lean on him and let him quiet our hearts, he will give us peace in our circumstance. Now this peace isn't just some kind of blissful ignorance, a little orphan any kind of the sun will come out tomorrow kind of peace. It's also not a promise that all your circumstances will change. Jesus said we'll have trouble. Jesus faced trouble himself. But instead, this peace is a deep, firm conviction that the same Prince of Peace who made peace between me and God is also on my side in my circumstance and that if he goes with me, I can trust him with everything. That's the peace he gives. When we say that Jesus is the Prince of Peace, we can trust him to be the giver of peace in our life. And during this global pandemic where there is so much uncertainty and fear, this is a part of Jesus we all need to know a little more. Now, personally, when I was in grade six, I went through a really difficult season where anxiety and fear took over my life and they started to affect me physically. I was always a fearful kid, but that year I was so afraid of dying that I couldn't swallow, I had a hard time eating, and I would hyperventilate constantly. Now, getting out of that period of my life took a lot of standing on God's promise to me that he hasn't given me a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. I had to learn that Jesus was offering me his peace. And when I finally received it, he gave me a new confidence that I could trust him through anything and all those symptoms fell away. One of my favorite songs is by a man named Rich Mullins who wrote a song called Hold Me Jesus. It's an honest account of a man wrestling with fear and doubt. And the chorus goes like this. Hold me Jesus, cause I'm shaking like a leaf. You have been king of my glory. Won't you be my Prince of Peace? Have you thought of Jesus as your Prince of Peace? Remember, names matter. Names remind us about the character and significance of their owner. And as you think about your own life today, remember that the Prince of Peace is with you and he wants to be your peace. Have a great week.